Oh my god. Okay, so we're gonna be watching that whole like 35 minutes Halo recap. But, 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 but. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, should we watch it actually and then rewatch the trailer? Why not now? Okay, I'm down. I'm super down. Um, I'm gonna give a shout out to the person who made this. This is Same Token. I haven't listened to it yet, but we're gonna be watching it. Thousands of years. With the announcement of Halo Infinite, instead of being dumbfounded at all these characters like who's this guy and what was this, we'll be recapping the overarching <laughs> Halo journey from start right. to finish. My name is Token, and you're watching a recap of everything you need to know about the Halo universe. Thanks, so same far. Token. Appreciate it. It all begins over a hundred thousand years ago, a time where things were simple and ancient humanity was spacefaring. Ancient humanity's expansion throughout the Milky Way was profound. But there was a parasite issue. A parasite that survives through the consumption and assimilation of entire civilizations. And they were known as the Flood. <laughs> Nothing too bad then, folks. We'll start running as fast as we can in that direction. <laughs> parasite, huh? Humanity arrived at a planet belonging to a race known as the Forerunners. But surprise, the Flood was already on that planet. The humans, finding there was no other option, and likely having new shiny warheads to test out, decided that I love his accent. the only way to stop them would be to annihilate this planet. This act of kindness was mistaken as aggression by the Forerunners, especially by the Didact, who was the supreme commander of the Forerunner military. And he was evil because he had a British accent. He believed Aww. the humans unworthy he looks of like Voldemort. the mantle of responsibility. This is the obligation of the most evolved life forms to act as caretakers of lesser life. Ironically, it is said the foreigners themselves stole the mantle from their own caretakers, the precursors, by simply wiping them out. And they did this out of jealousy because the precursors wished to pass the mantle down to humanity. As a result, the human forerunner war began and lasted around 50 years and also killed all of the Didact's children so he was left a, a little bit bitter. The humans lost the war. And it wasn't until then that the forerunners discovered the real reason for humanity's aggression. They were trying to stop the spread of the flood. But it was too late. The forerunners were being infested with flood, their planets and people being consumed and twisted. As punishment, the humans were forced by the Forerunners to start again on a planet that would eventually become known as Earth. Humans were regressed to tribal communities, building with wood and listening to Justin Bieber from 2010, but mostly the first thing. The Didact and his Prometheans, his most respected warrior servants, found this punishment just. He was ordered to dismantle his shield worlds, but he refused. Ten Instead, ten. he stole the composer a device that would transfer organic consciousness into mechanical shells. In his own effort against the Flood, he converted his Promethean warriors into a synthetic army immune to the Flood. As the Flood grew more intelligent, the Forerunners created a highly powerful artificial intelligence known as Mendicant Bias. He was great at setting timers, shuffling your dance playlists, and leading all the defense efforts against the Flood. Mendicant Bias decided it no longer wanted to play music on shuffle for the Forerunners, instead wanted to start killing them. Da -da -da. <laughs> the fight against the Flood became hopeless, with the Gravemind and Mendicant Bias mounting a large assault against the Forerunners. Seven rings were constructed by the newly created Installation 00, the Lesser Ark. These were the final rings, forming the ultimate death machine. Killing the Flood's food was the only way to stop them. Before activation, humanity, along with all the other species, were stored in the Ark, and slipspace portals were placed on their homeworlds. The rings were activated, and boy did they do a great job. Everything was very, very dead. Fortunately, the slip space portals worked. Humanity was transported to Africa, and by the 2500s, humanity had once again spread out across the galaxy. But only the remnants of the Forerunner civilization exist. Humanity entered an era of political unrest, with the outer colonies feeling there was an uneven distribution of wealth, with them supplying almost all of the resources for the inner colonies. So they devised a solution. They became known as the Insurrectionists, committing acts of terrorism 
while fighting wars of attrition with the UNSC, the military arm of the government. In the interest of killing insurrectionists more effectively, Dr. Catherine Halsey, an Office of Naval Intelligence Scientist, created a program known as the Spartan 2 Project. Since money was tight, she thought, why not just kidnap children, boom, through brutal military exercises and experimental augmentation I do remember that. Day, why not? And so, in 2517, the project began. Children were taken from their homes and their schools and were replaced by clones. Clones that would quickly die, erasing the real children from existence. Many of the subjects died in the grueling processes, but those who survived became stronger and quicker than thought possible. One Spartan proved himself to be one of the best and was made the leader of his own fire team, known as Blue Team. His name was John 117, and he would become a highly decorated veteran for his actions against the insurrectionists. But then humanity found out they were not alone in the universe. Womp womp. This attack began the Human Covenant War. The Covenant had been destroying the outer colonies one by one, starting with Harvest, turning Why the surface into glass. I have a feeling that like, glass, I wasn't allowed mode. to watch any of this. During the final days of Harvest, the UNSC Spirit of Fire defended that my the crush? planet under the command of Captain James Cutter. The Covenant had managed to uncover a forerunner relic on the planet that acted as a map room detailing the locations of other forerunner artifacts. Using this information, the Covenant were pointed to a second human colony. Arcadia. Following them, the Spirit of Fire's crew found that the planet's defenses had already been destroyed, with the Covenant discovering more Forerunner ruins. As Professor Ellen Anders, a researcher on the Spirit of Fire, begins documenting the area, she is kidnapped by the Arbiter, a rank in the Covenant that is bestowed upon those who are shamed, so they may regain their honor from death in battle. With Anders, the Covenant wanted to use her to activate a Forerunner Dreadnought, as they had found that only humans could activate Forerunner technology. The Spirit of Fire follows them closely, eventually emerging over the shield world, Etrin Harborage. Here, Anders manages to escape back to the Spirit of Fire, oh not my before God. encountering the Flood, who despite the Halo Array, managed to still exist. Removing their slip space drive and planting it on the shield world's inner sun, they sent it into Supernova, destroying the installation along with the Covenant fleet. Had the Covenant utilized the Shield World's technology, the Covenant would have sent humanity into extinction. However, without a slip space drive, the Spirit of Fire would be unable to return to human space, as traveling below light speed meant they could have been thousands of years away from home. As the ship begins the long journey home, her crew enter cryosleep, not knowing when or where they would be waking up. And in 2534, the UNSC declared the ship lost with all hands, as a result, humanity had no idea of the existence of the Flood. As the war progressed, a new Spartan program was underway. Rather than kidnapping children, they could now make discount Spartans, known as the Spartan Threes. Need this Spartan right here, Noble Six, you don't know their name because they're you. Together with Carter, Kat, Emile, June, and George, who's bigger because he's a Spartan too, they make up Noble Team. Noble team were called to defend Oni Sword Base, where Dr. Halsey was working. An item Cat looted from one of Halsey's scientists contained a plot device important for destroying the Covenant or something else. Who knows? She knows. Noble assisted with the defense efforts against the invading Covenant, but it became clear the planet was doomed to be glassed. At Sword Base, Halsey instructs Noble Six to deliver a fragment of an AI known as Cortana to the Pillar of Autumn to escape the planet. June escorted Halsey in her evacuation, while the rest of Noble Team are killed in action. I'm like getting, so there's like a lot of like parts and pieces that I'm getting like flashbacks from. The Pillar from. of escaped and made a blind slip space jump to escape the Covenant, only to accidentally stumble across a Halo ring world, Installation 04. John 117, the Master Chief, who was on board the Pillar of Autumn, was awoken an order to protect Cortana. So who cares about the rest of the crew? John Ran didn't stop until he was the sole survivor of a crashed escape pod. Chief was now stranded on the mysterious ring world while the Pillar of Autumn was manually uh, landed. With the help of Cortana's instructions, Chief arrives at the ring's control room to identify Captain Key's last location. I remember that. And once they arrive there, there's no keys in sight. And what's that unusual sound? Oh no, oh it's, it's the flood. 
The Flood have Always. been stored on the Halo Ring in a dormant state, and were made considerably less dormant by the Covenant, who had been poking around because they thought the Ring was some kind of religious symbol that would propel them into paradise. But oh, were they wrong. Lol. 343 Guilty Spark, the AI monitor of this Halo Ring, was prompted to activate his installation. Like with Professor Anders on the Shield World, only a human could do so. So Guilty Spark teleports the Master Chief and instructs him to retrieve the activation index from Hell itself, the library. The Chief, ignoring the whole Reclaimer thing and under the impression that the ring could be used as a weapon against the Covenant, happily obtains it. And just as the Chief was inadvertently about to kill all life in a 25,000 light year radius, Cortana realizes the true purpose of Halo. Now, 343 Guilty Spark doesn't much like the Chief's apprehension, and Cortana doesn't much like the Spark's tone, so the Chief gets the hell out of there. <laughs> Cortana instructs the Chief to detonate the Autumn's fusion reactor so that the ring may be destroyed. However, to operate the Autumn, they had to locate Captain Key's neural implant. Unfortunately, he had already succumbed to the Flood, and was on his merry way to becoming a proto grave mind. Chief had no time for this nonsense, and with the implant in hand, <laughs> the Chief flew to the Pillar of Autumn's crash site and fought his way to the reactor. Guilty Spark attempted and failed to stop it. And it's with a so good. grenade or 20, the Autumn's engine was set to overload. Chief and Cortana escaped on a warthog along the roof of the Autumn. He reaches a longsword where he makes his escape. In the distance, Halo and everyone on it was completely destroyed. Not long after the destruction of Installation 04, the Sangheili Covenant Supreme Commander, who had failed to stop the Chief, was tried before the High Council. He'd been very bad, and on the human side, Chief had been very good. And you get a medal, you get a medal, and you get a medal too. Medals. Suddenly, interrupting the ceremony and Lord Hood's generous medal giving, a Covenant fleet appear out of slipspace. Incredibly, they did not expect humans to be on Earth. The Covenant boarded the space stations with the intention of blowing them up. So, the Chief returned the favor by giving the Covenant back their bomb. <laughs> he does so, and lands on the In Amber Clad. This ship was commanded by none other than Captain Key's daughter, Miranda Keys. The Chief joined the UNSC on Earth in fighting the Covenant threat, successfully holding their invasion. This prompted the Prophet of Regret to flee Earth hastily slip space jumping right on top of the city of New Mombasa. Oh. Yo, imagine seeing that in real life. By the way. Exiting slip space, they discover that regret had led them to another halo ring. The prophet's intention was to activate this ring. But the chief had enough of this, so he catapulted it down with a couple of ODSTs, reached regret, mounted him, and literally punched him to death. As the chief made his escape, I love this guy so much. Covenant's mobile capital city arrived. To stop him, they started glassing the surface of the ring. So the chief started running very quickly in the opposite direction. On board High Charity, the disgraced Covenant commander was being given a chance at redemption. And by redemption, they mean suicide missions by taking up the role <laughs> as an arbiter. His task was to assassinate the leaders of the heretics, a faction of the government that split off after themselves learning the truth of the Halo Rings. That no, they won't send you to paradise and that yes, they will kill you and everyone you love. The arbiter finds and captures Miranda Keys and Sergeant Johnson, who had managed to retrieve the index. Just as the Arbiter was about to keep the Index for himself, Tartarus shows up and reveals that the Hierarchs had intended for him to die. Tartarus Aww. then threw the Arbiter off the ledge, right into the clutches of the Gravemind, who already had the Chief. <clears throat> it was here that the Gravemind helped the Arbiter question his faith in the Great Journey. That, I mean, obviously, Halo's a super weapon. It was in the Gravemind's interest to prevent the firing of the Halo Ring, so that he wouldn't starve, needed to preserve all that meat. Reluctantly, the Chief and the Arbiter joined forces to stop the Prophets. The Gravemind teleported the Arbiter near Halo's control room, fighting his way there with the help of Sergeant Yo, Johnson, the plot twists. who had commandeered a Dude, scatter. when am I gonna watch the movie? Blinded by his belief in the Great Journey, Tartarus forced Miranda Keys to activate the Halo Ring with her human touch. 
The Arbiter killed oh, him no. quickly or slowly, depends how good you are. And with Tartarus dead, Miranda manages to retrieve the index just in time, Get deactivating girl. the Halo Ring. <gasps> However, 343 Guilty Spark notified them that this had activated a failsafe protocol, sending a signal to the rest of the Halo array, placing all the rings on standby for remote activation from the Lesser Ark. While the Arbiter, Keys, and Johnson were grappling with Tartarus, the Chief was sent to High Charity to stop Truth. Unfortunately, he is too late, with Truth making an escape to Earth. The Chief had no choice but to leave Cortana behind, as she had the crashed that. in amber clad primed for detonation in the case of the ring activating. Using the grav lift, the Chief launched himself towards the Forerunner Dreadnought the Covenant had procured so that he may finish this fight. With the Chief heading towards Earth, the Grave Mine had completely taken over High Charity, and with it, now held Cortana captive. Which Halo was that? It was three, right? Dude, it's been so long. Two weeks later, Holy Chief shit. damaged through Earth's atmosphere after breaking off from the Forerunner Dreadnought. Here, he is found by Johnson and the Arbiter, who the Chief is happy to see. They fight their way to a UNSC outpost where they learn of a final effort to stop truth from activating the Ark, the teleport to which had been located underneath the outskirts of New Mombasa all this time. Together, the Chief and the Arbiter destroy the Covenant's anti-air defenses so Lord Hood could attack the Prophet's fleet. The truth activated the artifacts, creating a slipspace portal which the Covenant then entered. At the same time, Yeet. a flood-infested ship crash lands nearby. Of course. And on board, they discovered a UNSC construct which happened to be naked and blue. This turned out to be a recording from Cortana, urging naked them to reach all. the Ark. <laughs> the humans and an allied Sangheili faction head through the portal, aided by 343 Guilty Spark, who without his ring had no other purpose. Aww. They arrive at Installation 00, which existed beyond the edges of the Milky Way galaxy. But they are closely followed by the Flood, arriving on High Charity, quickly infesting the Ark. Truth kidnaps Johnson to activate the rings, killing Keys in her attempted murder-suicide. Johnson is then forced to activate the rings against his will, which is definitely cheating. As the Chief and Arbiter fight towards the control room, the Grave Mine forges a truce once again to stop Truth. With the support of the Flood, the Covenant forces were quickly dispatched, allowing the Arbiter to kill the partially infected Truth, who at this point was probably really hoping for this great journey thing to work out. The Chief deactivated <laughs> the array, but the Grave Mine quickly turned on the journey. <gasps> they escape, only to discover the Ark had been constructing a replacement for Installation 04. Fortunately, the Ark was over a hundred thousand light years from the edge of the Milky Way, so they decided the best solution was to activate the ring to eliminate the flood on the Ark. The duo saved Cortana from High Charity, overloading the city's engine to kill the Grave Mind. All personnel, other than the Chief, Johnson, and the Arbiter, evacuate the Ark. Cortana stayed because she has no choice. After reaching the new Halo's control room, the Guilty Spark informs Johnson the ring would be ready to fire in a few more days. Now, Johnson felt this was the slightest bit impractical, especially as the Grave Mind was attempting to rebuild himself. The only issue was the firing of the ring at this stage would likely destroy the ring itself. Spark deemed this unacceptable and opened fire at Johnson. Chief retaliated, but was too late to save his friend. Oh. The mortally wounded Johnson urged Chief to send him out with a bang. With the ring activated, this was an easy request. The Chief and Arbiter raced towards the forward unto dawn as the ring shaked itself to destruction. As the dawn reaches the portal, with the Arbiter at the controls, very quickly realizing he's no idea how to pilot a human ship, it closes <laughs> before they could make it through, severing the dawn in half. The Arbiter's side ended up on Earth, and the Chief and Cortana ended up in an unknown location in space. The Chief, with no other option, climbed into a cryo-tube, asking Cortana to wake him when the game received higher than 90 meta score, and it did! So two years following the Ark's event, 
Dr. Catherine Halsey is detained <laughs> and interrogated for, well, kidnapping children and turning them into super soldiers. Shortly after, she was released under tight supervision, which is basically scot-free after what she did. <laughs> and on the year 2557, Cortana wakes the chief as the dawn is boarded by the Covenant. Cortana explains that her erratic behavior earlier was being due to rampancy, a known trade-off with advanced AI. As they age, they begin to think themselves to death. Chief suggests attempting to find a ship and fly back to Earth to see if Dr. Halsey could fix this, which given their current situation is very glass half full. The chief reaches the cartographer, fighting a new foe along the way, the Didax synthetic Prometheus. The cartographer reveals a signal coming from the UNSC supercarrier Infinity. They decided it would be a good idea to enter the big hole in the strange planet, with the Chief and Cortana both in agreement that this is a terrible idea, they attempt to warn them, but this was unsuccessful. They attempt to follow the Infinity Signal, discovering an unusual spherical object to be its origin. It opens, inside revealing the Didact. He quickly defeats the Chief, declaring that the Forerunners will be returning. He makes a few remarks about how weak humanity is. Clearly, someone's still I didn't bigger. know that. The Chief escapes the Didact, quickly retreating because, yeah, he's, he's a little weaker than the Didact. He makes his way to the Infinity while fending off the Prometheans and the Covenant who have joined forces, because why not? Arriving at the ship, the Chief is introduced to the cheerful Captain Andrew Del Rio and Commander Palmer, who is herself a Spartan Four voluntarily rather than childhood abduction. Rio orders an attack on the gravity well that is keeping the Infinity from leaving. Before the Chief is able to complete his objective, however, the deceased librarian comes to him in a vision, telling him to use the Force, and also telling him about the history of the Forerunners, <laughs> the existence of ancient humanity, and the Didact's intentions to compose so humanity good. in its entirety. Still opposing the Didact, she provided the Chief with an immunity to the Composer. I mean, this guy is classic evil. Truth was just misguided, and the Grave Mine had to eat, but this guy, oh! He's a bad egg. Returning to the Infinity, Captain Del Rio has a pleasant exchange with the Chief and decides that he wants to leave the planet now and pretend the whole Didact thing coming to enslave humanity things is not happening. Yeah, Cortana defies course. the Captain and shouts a little, which is a sign of rampancy, prompting Rio to order the Chief to surrender her. Which, I mean, fair enough, policy is policy, but that ain't gonna happen. So. The Chief steals a pelican and attempts to stop the Didact himself, which after everything he's been through is basically masochism at this point. Before the Chief could reach him, the Didact escapes, escorted by the Covenant. Reaching one of the ships, the Chief clings on for dear life as they enter slipspace, pursuing them to Ivanov's station where the Composer resided. Failing to fend off the Didact, he obtains the Composer and activates it on the station's crew, turning all but the Chief, thanks to the Librarian's gift, into ash. As the Didact races towards Earth to compose humanity, the Chief stowed away below the Didact's shields. Once arriving at Earth, the Infinity blows a hole in the hull, allowing the Chief inside. He's too late, however, and the Didact activates the Composer, firing at Earth and composing New Phoenix. Eventually, the Chief reaches the Didact after plugging Cortana into his ship, defeating him with a Forerunner pulse grenade. He falls, but is he dead? Who knows? The Chief then manually detonates the nuclear bomb he'd been carrying, destroying the Composer. Cortana uses the ship to teleport the Chief away from the blast, using hard light technology. She was able to touch him for the first and last time, welcoming him oh, home no. and fading away. I do remember that. I think that's the last thing of Halo that I saw. The Chief, drifting in space, was rescued by the Infinity. And for the first time since Halo 2, he had his armor removed and oh god, the smell! <coughs> the Chief confirms the destruction of the Composer and Cortana, but not the Didact's death, which leads the UNSC to publicly blame the Covenant remnants for the New Phoenix incident. After many years of them believing the Chief dead, he reconvenes with Blue Team, now consisting of Fred, Kelly, and Linda. Together, they were sent to uncover the former location of the Composer, 
eventually finding the composer's forge, which contained six new composers. Turns out, yep, Didac was alive, so they killed him once and for all. Now he's dead, and all the composers were destroyed. Nice. So, with that all wrapped up, Dr. Halsey, who had escaped the UNSC by joining forces with Jewel Madama, contacted the UNSC with information regarding the foreigner attacks that had been occurring on the human colonies. It is now the year 2558, and the UNSC deploys Spartan 4 fire team Osiris to retrieve her from Jewel Madama's clutches. Arriving on the planet Kamkatcha, the Covenant inexplicably lose control over the Prometheans. Osiris, That's Reach, right? Fighting through pretty much anything that moves, I haven't seen anything for that Jewel one. Madama. Now I feel a boss fight coming on. <laughs> I like this guy. assassinated. Halsey was recaptured. I mean, she's never getting a break, but then again, child soldiers. Meanwhile, Blue Team was infiltrating an Oni research ship that had been captured by Covenant scavengers. While on board, the chief has a vision of Cortana, where she tells him that Meridian him is and his next. visions. Now, Meridian is a planet in the outer five? colonies with a population of around yeah, 5,000. Who cares about them? Cortana's alive and Chief was gonna find her. Chief reassigns his team to Meridian against his superior's orders. Concerned that Cortana might be manipulating the Chief using the Domain, a vast forerunner repository, Osiris is sent to bring Blue Team back using these armor restraints. After arriving at Meridian, Osiris defended the colonists from an invading Promethean force long enough for them to escape. It's so return, weird because Governor the lingo Sloan, is so similar to colony, Mass Effect. Led them to the settlement of Apogee. While it appeared Blue Team had faced no like opposition, the very, very Osiris were forced to battle waves of Prometheans, eventually defeating the Warden Eternal, who had introduced himself as Cortana's servant. Spartan Locke manages to reach the Chief, and they lock in hand to hand combat. With the Chief besting Locke and Osiris left behind, Blue Team make their way to a Guardian a forerunner construct built to police the galaxy as peacemakers. Peacemakers with weapons capable of destroying anything in his blast radius. The Guardian emerges on Genesis, a planet acting as the gateway to the Domain, where the Chief reunites with Cortana, who says her rampancy was cured by forerunner technology. And upon finding Blue Team, they reveal Cortana is planning on stealing the mantle of responsibility for herself, mm. using the Guardians to enforce galactic peace. The Chief, realizing this is a terrible idea, attempts to talk Cortana down, refusing. She um. confines Blue Team in a Forerunner Cryptum and literally takes them with her. Osiris manages to return control of Genesis back to Exuberant Witness, who steals back and releases Blue Team just as Cortana leaves on a Guardian. AI across the galaxy pledge their allegiance to Cortana. However, as she attempts to disable the UNSC Infinity, it's AI, Roland, remains loyal, making an emergency oh. slip space jump to escape. Hmm. For the first time in many years, the chief is reunited oh. with Halsey, his mother figure, because with a little Stockholm syndrome, anything is possible. <laughs> One year later, in the year 2559, and after 28 years you had a crush of drift in space, you would. the spirit of fire Sorry. begins to reactivate. The crew Who being awakened Please. due to an unexpected development, Cutter, and Anders realized they had somehow been transported through slip space to an unknown location outside of the Milky Way. And looming below them is Installation 00. On the installation is an aggressive Covenant force known as the Banished, a splinter faction led by Atriox, who had rebelled against the Covenant near the end of the Human Covenant War. Their forces rose in number after the war's conclusion with those who wanted to continue fighting humanity. Retrieving much of the retired Covenant technology, the Banished occupied the Lesser Ark, a fact the Spirit of Fire's crew quickly learn. They begin a campaign against the Banished as they find a way to contact the UNSC. During the fight, the Spirit of Fire falls under attack from the Enduring Conviction, the flagship of the Banished. During this, Anders forms a bold plan to contact the UNSC. The Ark had been building a completely new Halo Ring, Installation 09, though rings from the Ark could only be slip-spaced to predetermined locations. Fortunately, Installation 04's original location was close to the human colony, Reach, 
and the ring was no longer there. Mm. So, this means Anders could use the Halo Ring, a super weapon capable of wiping out all life, as a method of reaching the UNSC. Of course, before sending Sorry. it right into the heart of human space, the Spirit of Fire crew has to reach its control room to disarm the kill everything part of the ring. Managing this, the crew begins to evacuate. Unfortunately, Anders is unable to make it out before the Halo enters slip space. The Spirit of Fire, oh. remaining on the Ark, continue fighting, awaiting her return. On its way to Installation 04's site, the Halo is unexpectedly pulled out of slip space. Perplexed, Anders exits the control room and reaches the surface, only to be confronted by a guardian. And this brings us to now. Following an intricate and exciting journey, Halo continues with Halo Infinite. At this point, we can only speculate uh, whether Installation 09 at the end of Halo Wars 2 is the same ring revealed in Halo 5's legendary ending, and how all of this is related to the ring featured in the announcement trailer. All I can say is the Halo universe has so much more life to give, as does the Master Chief's story. And by looking at the latest trailer, with the style and the location and the music, 343 are listening to the fans, and I must say I am feeling even more confident about the next installment. I do hope this video helps to reconcile yeah. Halo's behemoth of a universe, but this only skims the surface. There are far more stories that have been told and are yet to be told. Uh, here, I'm gonna give you guys a, uh, a link to that. Go subscribe to the dude. Uh, this guy is great. Um, and I want to play Halo as well, man. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess I can do a full playthrough. You know, people are all about it. I love this guy. He's great. Mm, subscribe. Um, yeah, man. Maybe we could do like a whole freaking week. Like a Halo week or something. You know? Maybe that would be fun.